Welcome back to The Legal Brief, the show where we crush the various legal myths and misinformation surrounding various areas of the gun world. I'm your host, Adam Kraut, and today we're talking about how California required gun owners to register assault weapons and then wouldn't let them do it. Neomag offers a slick solution to discreetly carrying a spare magazine securely in your pocket. Available in small, medium, and large to hold anything from 380 to 10 mil. Also now available are the extended clip versions, which allow you to carry deeper in your pocket or carry your spare mag with an extension. Utilizing strong neodymium magnets, a steel backer, and titanium clips, these things are built to last. To get 10% off your order over at theneomag.com, use the code TGC2018. Earlier this month, along with a few other gun rights groups, the Firearms Policy Coalition and three individuals filed suit against the California Attorney General, its Department of Justice, the Chief of the Firearms Division, and various employees. The suit was brought in relation to the recent bullet button registration fiasco that left thousands of gun owners in a precarious legal position. In order to understand what happened here, we need to take a quick look at a little bit of history. Back in 2016, California passed a number of laws in what was known as Gunpocalypse. The Gunpocalypse is here. Americans need to know that this is happening. The laws would not go into effect until January 1, 2017, since they were not emergency measures. Prior to July 1st, 2018, Californians who had firearms equipped with bullet buttons before January 1, 2017 had a few options. They were either to register them, to take them out of the state, or reconfigure them as featureless, meaning lacking evil features, by installing workaround compliance devices in order to avoid having an illegal assault weapon. Simply put, assault weapons could no longer be legally purchased or assembled after December 31st, 2016. For those of you not keeping score, that's the day before January 1, 2017. But in order to register a firearm, a person would have to go to a DOJ web portal and complete the registration process. This is where things start to get a little bit silly. Those who wanted to register their firearms found out that California must have employed the same Canadians who created healthcare.gov because the damn thing just didn't work. They're not even a real country anyway. Now, there's a few points that are important to bear in mind for those of you that are Californians, and my apologies. Firearms Policy Coalition stated that a few people might find themselves in legal trouble due to the registration. Why? Because California's DOJ is using people's registration information and pictures to investigate if they had that firearm before January 1st, 2017, among other things. And DOJ wouldn't let someone register a featureless firearm even if it was an assault weapon before January 1, 2017. Merely trying to make a gun featureless using different parts may not comply with the law. Not to mention, the regulations the DOJ has been creating were only in relation to registration, but not criminal enforcement. And DOJ still hasn't updated its assault weapons identification guide, so no one knows how California's attorney general and the 58 county prosecutors will interpret or enforce the new laws. The week prior to the deadline to register, those who attempted to log on to the system were shut out by technical defects and failures of the DOJ's system. For some, the system would simply time out while attempting to access it. Others were able to fill out some or even all of the required information only to have the system time out and fail by clicking the submit button. This resulted in numerous registrations being blocked at the last minute even though the person sought to comply with the process. One of the individuals in the suit attempted to access that website over 50 times over the course of one day without any luck. So he was literally trying to comply and California was experiencing technical difficulties. You know, business as usual. When he attempted to obtain help from California's DOJ, he only received an automated response. On July 2nd, the day after this deadline, he was actually able to reach a live person who explained that it was his responsibility to have registered by the deadline and that no extensions were to be granted. One of the other plaintiffs never even had his email inquiry responded to. So what do you do when the government requires you to register your bullet button and then the website becomes completely inaccessible the week prior to the deadline? Revolt! Now you see the government. Let me guess. You're gonna pound my face. What are you, nuts? This is the 90s. We're gonna sue you. 
The plaintiff's complaint sought declaratory and injunctive relief from the court. Declaratory relief is an order from the court which defines the legal relationship between the parties and what their rights are in the matter before the court. In this instance, the plaintiffs are asking the court to declare that the state deprived them of due process of the law by failing to provide a working registration system and that the defendants failed to provide a working registration system as required by the law. Injunctive relief is a court order that requires a party to refrain from taking an action. In this case, the plaintiffs are asking the court to stop the defendants from enforcing the penalties in the statutes relating to the registration of firearms until they're given a reasonable amount of time to register with a working system. Let's recap this nonsense for you. FPC and a few other intrepid firearms advocates are suing the California DOJ, among others, because of a complete breakdown of a system meant to register assault weapons. The California DOJ and its cohorts are terrible at their jobs. That's right, I said it. <laughs> I said it. It had to be said. Somebody got to say it. And very few people were able to comply with a law that shouldn't have been enacted in the first place because of technical difficulties. That's it for this episode. If you learned anything from the show, help us out and hit that like button, share it around with your friends. Don't forget to get subscribed, and if you enjoyed the video, consider supporting us via the links down in the video description. Be sure to check out the Gun Collective podcast live on Thursdays on YouTube, or download us on iTunes, and as always, thanks for watching. The shirts worn in today's video on the Gun Collective have been provided by Patriot Patch. Closed captions have also been brought to you by Patriot Patch Company. Be sure to click the link in the video description to check out all of their great products, including their cleaning mats.